Muhammad Ali. And the first question I wanted to ask you is, uh, you said you're going to be fighting soon. What about that? Well, yes, we're working on a bout uh, on a few Indian reservations. Uh, now we are just about to wind up a deal if everything goes uh, like we expect it to. And on a reservation not far from Seattle, Washington, and then there's one um, not too far from Phoenix. And the one in uh, Seattle seems like the most likely, but we're now negotiating. My manager, Herbert Mohammed, and uh, business manager, C.B. Atkins, they've been working and working, and I think they have now gotten it. And um, they are talking about making me uh, an honorary chief. And also this fight we hope to sell to the TV where everybody at home can see it. And the major problem is finding a suitable opponent. I don't think we can get Ellis and Frazier. They're ducking me. Joe Frazier and James Ellis, those the two uh, so-called homemade champs they got. I think they ducking me. And now we're trying to negotiate in England, Germany, Canada, and um, possibly maybe some top contenders in the States. So that's where we stand right now. We're sure the fight and everything and the site is ready, but uh, the contender is the hard thing to find. Is uh, Indian Reservation the only place the man letting you fight now? Well, yes. Uh, they have completely cut me off from earning a living, the government has here in America. They will not allow me to leave the country where I could make millions if I could just get out. I'm so popular and well-liked in Asia and Africa and Europe, and Germany and all these countries will accept me, even Canada. But America took my passport where I couldn't leave, and they won't let me work an exhibition or nothing in America. So all the Indians heard about this, and they all got together, and they said that with their laws or some type treaty or something that they have, they can let me uh, pursue my trade on their land. Really, this is the Indian's land, and he's really the true American. So he's really the only one that's practicing the so-called American policy, freedom of religion, freedom of speech, and, and this and that. So the real true Americans are going to let me fight on their land, what little land that the white man left them. He stated that you're going to be making a college tour this fall. Why and uh, what sort of things are you going to be talking about on the tour? Well, I've been making college tours now for the past uh, two years, but I did announce it publicly on the Johnny Carson show the other night. I've been mainly uh, invited. I have 68 college invitations, and they all want me to speak on racial problems. Uh, what do I see as the solution? They want me to clarify the works and the missions of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. They want me to speak on the draft, why I denounced it. What do I think about the title? Why did they take it? How did I start boxing? And we just go on and go on. The presidential election, who am I for, and all these type questions. And there are many we answer and some we have to sort out that we don't answer. But usually I have uh, all of my lectures designed from the book that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad has out, uh, a message to the black man, speaking on titles such as we must respect and protect our women, uh, what the Muslims want, what the Muslims believe, uh, do, we must do for ourselves, we must help self before helping others, we must respect our own selves and unite and separate from our slave masters and all type lectures and then after these uh, rather controversial issues I have about an hour sometimes two hours and at the average I try to keep it at an hour to the longest question period so this is what going in the colleges I have different lectures for all white colleges uh, half integrated colleges and all black colleges I have different lectures laid out what sort of response do you get from white colleges and black colleges well, it's just beautiful, uh, great. The people will just come just by the thousands, just grabbing me and chasing me. 
and mainly these college students of white, they are all are with me on my belief on war, mainly Vietnam, and they all are rebelling now and fighting. And number one, this is why so many of the white colleges want me there is because of my stand on draft and religious convictions and not uh, taking a stand and not selling out on Uncle Tom. And this really gets you a lot of respect because many people make protesters and say what they're going to do, but at the last minute they back out, mainly our people when it comes to bucking white people. And my stand in this is making me much, much greater than I ever could be a boxer. You are listening to Pacifica Radio Archives tribute to Muhammad Ali using recordings in our collection. If you would like to purchase a copy of this program or our special Muhammad Ali 4-disc collection, go to PacificaRadioArchives.org or call us in the archives at 1-800-735-0230. Remember, every donation helps us restore another treasure from our over 55,000 reel-to-reel tapes in our library. And now back to Julius Lester's September 1968 interview with Muhammad Ali. Do you find that black students are responding to the message of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad? Yes, sir. All the black students, they have their own Muslim uh, meetings. They don't call them Muslim meetings, but they, are, they don't allow no whites in the meetings now. And uh, all of this is from the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. And, uh, they read the Muhammad Speaks newspapers. They call each other black now. They call each other brother. They call each other sister. He's been preaching this for the past now um, 30 uh, eight years, but they don't follow him all the way. They don't want to follow him spiritually and divinely. They, um, for an example, you see the brother on the campus with his afro, with his African robe and um, his dakid and his beads and his sandals, but his white girl in his arm. So he's half black. If he was all the way black, he would have him a, a black girl to go along with his afro and his African robe and dakid. Then you'll see the sister with her afro and her dakid and her bees and her sandals and her mini mini skirt on. See, she's African from waist up, but twiggy from hips down. So uh, she's half African and half English. So our people are, are not criticizing them. We cannot criticize a baby. I don't know if Elijah Muhammad teaches us who starts trying to talk. At least he's trying. And our people are starting to think in the way of black, but they're not yet all the way with the right man, but gradually they're coming more to the Muslim program daily. Everything that's designed, we clean must build, get our own businesses. They're arguing about they want their own businesses. That's the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. At the latest Black Power rally, they said we want separate states, we want our own states. That's the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. And they call the white man the devil and all that. That's the beast. That's the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Everybody today talking back or preaching black, any black movement, check him out. He's an ex-Muslim. He was uh, influenced by one of the ministers, of Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Or he sneaks and reads the Muhammad Speaks newspaper. He, they steal his program and go out and act like they just thought up something. And everything that our people are preaching and talking today, if any of our leaders hold any type of an audience, you'll find out that they're talking Muslim talk, but they just won't give the credit to the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. So... Uh, this is just what we uh, answering your question about the black colleges. All of them know the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Every black man today, you find him and say, I salam alaikum. He'll say, wa alaikum salam. For the first time, he's speaking his own language. You hear names like Hassan and Omar and Akbar and Ahad and Ishmael and the, all kind of names today. All this comes to Honorable Elijah Muhammad. So uh, the only leader for us today, the only man for us today who has the key to free us from these evil, wicked slave masters is the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. And our people are waking up to it daily and asking your question on the college campuses. They don't outright follow him, but they do take half of his program and use it to suit their needs. But in a few days, they'll soon be glad to accept all of him. A few weeks ago in Muhammad Speaks, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad uh, wrote an article where he said that he didn't feel that black people should wear the Afro hairstyle and the African dress. And I didn't quite understand that. Well, to my knowledge, 
I heard him say that God, Allah, taught him everything that he's teaching us today. See, the Ambi Elijah Muhammad, whether you follow him or not, is waking you up. And everything that he got came from the Supreme Beam, and we believe everything that he say, not just one or two things and then go and start something else. He says, the law God gave him the style for us to wear, and we don't follow after no Africans. He says, uh, uh, we are the original people, and our law God has come to put us on top of civilization, and we don't have to go back to the jungles to get a style. We have a style. Muslims are neat, they are clean, neat haircuts, and the sisters are clean and respectable. We have our own style of clothing, and he don't, he cannot influence his followers to follow after something that uh, just came up yesterday when he's been here with his style for the past uh, uh, 38 years. We were following and trying to be like white people. Now we uh, seem to be going to the jungles to look like the people in the jungles. Well, Sudanese and Africans, uh, uh, you don't have to have thick lips and flat nose and a big woolly nappy head to be a black. Uh, smoking on the white man's cigarette, uh, smoking the white man's reefers, walking around with signs hollering, I'm black and I'm proud and I'm black and I'm beautiful. The white man don't walk around with signs saying he's white and beautiful and he's white and proud. He just acted and living so until he's got us now wanting to be white and like him. So if we really believe black was best and really was black and really believe black was beautiful, we don't have to go around trying to convince the world with big old signs on our back, I'm black and I'm beautiful, I'm black and I'm proud. If we are, we are, be it and act it. So what I'm trying to say, many people say, well, you got the white man's clothes on, you got the white man's suit on. Uh, uh, well, uh, we are living in this civilization, and the only Elijah Muhammad teaches us that we won't, a country and a nation of our own, then we are around our own, we can dress and do and can make our own styles. Well, uh, to those who say you may have a white man's suit on and a white man this, uh, well, we ride the white man's airplanes, or this is the white man's food, he grows it and cleans it. This is the white man's hotel, this is the white man's microphone. If we just want to be natural and be real natural, if we want to go from here to Los Angeles, we're going to have to take about six months to get there because we're going to have to use some elephants and some camels. So we're living in the modern time, and we're living in a time where we go along. Now, many of our people, I like to say, from Africa are getting nice, neat haircuts, and they put on nice suits and ties, and they come here to get education to go back to civilize and clean up and shave their own people. So we are not out to style ourselves after no Africans. Egyptians, Africans, uh, these are beautiful people. Uh, um, 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 uh, uh, people from Saudi Arabia, Africans, black beautiful people, and don't have to have a big woolly nappy head. People from, uh, um, I know this is natural and this is our hair, but uh, we are not here to really style after nobody. We have our own styles, and the Honorable Elijah Muhammad is our leader, and we understand that hair carries dirt and filth. And when we're around food, cooking and eating, uh, we should always be neat, mainly men. Now, I can see a sister having long hair, but the men shouldn't go around with big old uh, long hair. And not condemning nobody who do, not condemning none of the brothers who do, but we who follow the army Elijah Muhammad uh, believe everything he preach and teach. And if he's against it, then you can believe that it's something divinely uh, not too good about it because he's the real black teacher. He is the real black history teacher. And he's the one that's really for black people. So we can't condemn him for saying that we don't go for these naturals and afros. For an example, I was speaking to an African brother the other day. And I was saying something about how great black people are and how we win all the Olympic gold medals and how the black man in America is superior to everything you get a chance at. Africans, Mexicans, Cubans, nobody's as great as the American black man. He said, well, man, if black man is so great, if he's so good, why you try to look like us? Why you try to dress like us? You wear your hair like us. Everything you do is like us if you're so good. Why don't you go be like yourself? Why do why, why you follow us? If we, why you style yourself after us? So uh, many of our people will say that Africans think that they are better than us. Africans don't think that they're better than us. They just have a knowledge of themselves, and they don't want to be classified as a Negro because they know a Negro is really nothing in white society or the world. is dead to the knowledge of self. 
So uh, then when we see ourselves going around styling ourselves after people from other countries and nations, they'll get a more prouder and greater superior feeling. Elijah Muhammad teaches us God, Allah taught him that we've been on the bottom of civilization and Allah God has come to set us on the top. Not style after nobody in the jungles, but follow the honor of Elijah Muhammad and he's the one with the style. So uh, not condemning none of our people who do this, but the honor of Elijah Muhammad, if you don't go for it, you can believe that all of those seven, eight hundred thousand Muslims in America won't go for it. And everybody who joined will get a neat haircut. You have a three-month-old daughter now. What sort of woman do you want her to be? Just a righteous, good Muslim, believer in Allah, and starch follower of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. That's all. And a good Muslim sister, such as my wife is, for another good Muslim brother. That's all she have to be. What's a, what's a good Muslim sister? Well, uh, just a woman who follows the beliefs of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, pray five times a day, have the dinner waiting for the husband when he comes in, and uh, uh, wearing the Muslim dress, hiding her pri naked parts of her body off the streets after dark, and uh, just a nice, clean, respectable mother, a barrier of children, strong in the faith. And uh, this is a good Muslim sister, mainly belief in Allah, his messenger, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, and who follow the MGT, the Muslim Girls Training's Laws, uh, 100%. And this is a good Muslim sister. One last question. You said earlier that what you're doing now is much greater than being a heavyweight champion. A lot of folks would say that a lot has been taken away from you that because you can't earn a living, because you could be a millionaire many times over, that you've lost a whole lot. Yes, this is a man. Negroes have been made uh, like white people. And many of them say, champ, you know something? Uh, you got a right to believe what you want and all this and all that. But what about the money? This is our trouble today. All Negro, so-called Negroes were about his money. He's like the white man now. He'll blow up his mama for some money and sell out his people for some money. That's why we're nowhere today, because all the big Negroes with some money is up on the hill with the white folks, riding with the white folks, going to church with the white folks, marrying the white folks shuffling and tomming and loving white folks and they forget all about the brother down there in Harlem his rents due, living in a bad home, standing on the corner, nobody know him, nobody want him and he rides by in his limousine well uh, let them niggas make it like me, I can't take no chance on losing my money once we become followers of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad the flesh and the blood of our people is more important than the white man's money Money don't mean nothing if you're black to the white man. I don't care if you can buy a $500 house or a $500,000 house, you still a nigger. Adam Clayton Powell, a big black man, bumped him off in your face unjustly. Martin Luther King, a big black man, bumped him off in your face unjustly. Muhammad Ali, the biggest black man in all history boxing, bumped me off unjustly in your face. So excuse expression, money ain't worth a damn thing when it comes to wanting to be a man and I'm proud to say that I'm the first black man in the history of all America athlete and entertainer wise who gave up all the white man's money looked a white man in his eye and told him the truth and stayed with his people this is much greater than being in Sweden like Floyd Patterson or somebody uh, with a white woman never coming through Harlem to see his people and many more of these Uncle Tom niggers. And I'm just so happy. I go to bed happy. I wake up happy. And I'll go to jail for 10 years happy. And it'll always be said, there's one that didn't compromise. See, there are only two kind of men 
Those who compromise and those who take a stand, those who take a stand are the ones who they write history about. These are the ones movies are made about. John Glenn was the first man to go into space, white man. They go into space every day now, but John Glenn was the one who dared to dare. He conquered it first. John Glenn will go down in history. Columbus was the first man to go around the world. They said the world is square, but Columbus ran around the first time. This doctor over in uh, um, uh, uh, South Africa was the first one lately to transplant hearts. A black man did it in Chicago 100 years ago or so, but they don't tell you nothing about it. But he was the first one made known to the world. Uh, this doctor in South Africa. Now they transplant hearts every day, but that doctor will always go down. His statue will be there in history. You understand? So they'll have to say that I'm the first black man that took a stand and didn't get weak and go back. Now, many of our people make protests and say they're going to boycott and they're going to do this and do that. And then when the white man put the pressure on them, they back up. But I'm one who I hope and pray to Allah and his messenger, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, that I be one black man that they can look at and say, he never had a white woman, never chased a white woman. Turned down all $10 million in commercials, royalties. Turned down the world heavyweight title. Where is he at? There he is, over there, sitting on the garbage can with the wine heads. He don't have to be over there. There he is, talking to the prostitute. There he is, picking up the brother out alley, taking him to the Muslim temple. There he is, selling a prostitute a Muslim newspaper. Ain't that something? He really don't have to do it. See, they have to look at me now greater than just in a boxing ring. Good fight, boy. White man got all the money. Two Negroes cut each other up. They can't talk. And he pat him on the back. Good fight, boy. Great fight, boy. Uh, 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 good show, boy. Good dancing, boy. Good show, boy. Huh? But they can't look at me like that. See, I get all respect because I follow the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. You may not like Rap Brown or Stokely Carmichael, but they get more respect than the richest Negroes in America, the most white folks loving Negroes in America. When Rap Brown and Stokely Carmichael walk down the tree, traffic stops. Rap Brown, where? There he is. Stokely Carmichael, where? White folks. Jumping out of windows, looking at him, wanting to touch him. They admire warriors because they are warriors. They believe in dying and fighting for what they believe. They giving up ninety million dollars a day in Vietnam in the in the guts of their children for a principle. They died and fought the Indians. Money don't mean nothing when your people are free and hungry and catching hell. So all of these so-called Negroes listen to this show. I hope you learned something from this. Damn some money when it comes to your mama's freedom. You're so quick to go to Vietnam and fight and shoot and kill somebody you don't know, fighting so they can be free, and you come home and you get your head busted. So if I got to die, if I got to sacrifice, if I got to suffer, let it be for my black brothers and sisters. Let it be for my mama and not somebody 10,000 miles from here. So when you understand what I'm saying, when you weigh it out, if it means money or Tom, damn the money. You got time for one more question? Okay. Uh, you mentioned several times about uh, black men and white women. What do you see wrong with black men and white women? White men and black women and white men and black women is the worst thing we can do. Donald B. Elijah Muhammad says that God created us in nations, families, and tribes. Some people he made white and some he made black. Some he made brown, yellow, and red. And I'm sure the divine supreme being didn't make a mistake in his creation. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad teaches us that God, Allah, taught him, a wise black man, and see if what I'm saying don't make sense. He teaches us that God beautified the planet Earth by putting all of these people in separate countries and nations to themselves. We find Chinese in China. We find Mexicans in Mexico. We find Israelis in Israel. We find Egyptians in Egypt. We find Pakistanis in Pakistan. We find Syrians in Syria. We find Ghanaians in Ghana. We find Nigerians in Nigeria. We find Algerians in Algeria. We find Ethiopians in Ethiopia. We find Indonesians in Indonesia. We find Arabians in Arabia. Beautiful. So what I'm trying to say is that God created the planet Earth in nations, families, and tribes. Now, every man wants a son to look like himself. Any white man listening to this show, any white woman listening to this show, 
in his or her right white mind don't want little black girls and black girls, I would say, won't little black boys and black girls coming to marry their sons and daughters and in return introducing their grandchildren as little half brown kinky head negroes. It's a shame. It's a disgrace. Find a black baby in a white neighborhood, exile the whole family. They're not going to have it and we don't want it either. We don't mix up our beautiful black blood with no white folks. Too much in us now. It weakens us. A strong cup of coffee is black and make it weak put some cream in it. Uh, no black man listening to this show. No black woman in his or her right black mind won't little white boys and white girls coming to marry their sons and daughters and introducing their grandchildren as little half green-eyed, blonde-haired white folks. Black people are beautiful. We have beautiful sons. Our little brown girls are so beautiful. Black girls are so beautiful. And we should not want to mix up our blood with our 400-year-old open enemies of freedom, justice, and equality who's lynched and burned and assassinated and castrated and raped us for 400 years. We are the only people on earth who want to marry and love white folks, and we should be the last ones because we have been the ones who've been oppressed, denied freedom, justice, and equality. We are sick. We are brainwashed because we see a white Jesus who looks like the white woman. Same hair and blonde hair and blue eyes. We see the Lord's Supper's all white folks. All the angels in heaven all white folks. Tarzan, the king of the jungle, he's white. white White Owl Cigars, you've been brainwashed. White Swan Soap, King White Soap, White Cloud Tissue Paper, White Rain Hair Rinse, White Tornado Flow Wax, White Plus Toothpaste, Angel Food Cake is white, Devil Food Cake is chocolate. Can't go to heaven, you walk on the Milky White Way. When you get there, you, you got to be washing lamb blood to as white as snow before you get in. Mary had a little lamb, his feet as white as snow. Snow White. Even go look at King Kong at the movies, a big old grill out of Africa, 14 stories high. He's running up and, up and down Empire State Building and fighting guns and bullets just to keep a white woman in his arm. This is, you've been brainwashed. The black woman is the most beautiful. She has lips where a white woman don't. She don't need lipstick. She's got complexion. She's got beautiful black hair. She's got beautiful black eyes and not animal green and blue eyes. We are the original people God taught to honor Elijah Muhammad. We are the best. And as Jesus said, truth will make you free. Not integrating, not swimming in, not walking in, not laying in, but truth will make you free. And once we hear the truth, we don't want no white woman. Chinese wants to marry some Chinese. Mexicans want a beautiful Mexican baby. They love the culture. They're not seeking to lose their blood through racial identity, through racial integration. Scotchmen love their bagpipes and their old culture. Indians love their culture. Puerto Ricans love old Puerto Rico. Mexicans love old Spanish town. Everybody love his own but the old Negro. Why are we seeking to lose our blood through racial integration? It's the worst thing we can do. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad teaches us that integration means self-destruction, and the means to this end is exactly that, death and nothing less. So on these grounds, we are justified in sin that we should respect and protect our women and keep the white man out of our neighborhoods on Fridays, Saturdays, and Sunday nights. That's what you're doing when you want to integrate. You're giving the white man a legal right to carry your woman to the hotel or the motel, give all kind of diseases and spotted up babies. He don't want to marry, just want to use her. I travel from coast to coast every day. I know all the pimps and players. I know what I'm saying is right, and you do too, and the white folks listening know this is right. Muhammad is bold, and he makes us bold, and we're going to tell it. We'll never be respected if we don't respect our women because the woman is the feel which produces your nation. If you don't protect your nation, feel you'll produce a bad nation. A farmer goes out and studies poisons and chemicals of the earth. He sprays these poisons and chemicals on his cabbage, on his beans, his tomatoes, see to, seeking to kill any worm, any enemy, looking to destroy his crop. We'll shoot one another for stealing the other one's crop. We put scary crows up in the garden to scare the enemy away. Now, how much more important is our mamas, is our sisters, or our daughters, or our wives than our cabbage, our beans, and our corn when she's the field which produces our sons and daughters? The white man has lynched five Negroes to get the white right one that he think he that touched his woman. He respects and protects his woman. The Mexican, you don't mess over Mexican women. You don't mess over Puerto Rican, African women. If you do, they read about you the next morning. Well, black men... See white men come to our neighborhoods, carry our women to rooms, drive off in cars, don't throw a rock at the car, don't even protest. 
and we'll never be nothing as a nation until you respect our woman because your first lesson comes from a woman, your first nurse is a woman, your mother's your first teacher. And if we so-called Negroes don't respect our mother, we'll never be nothing. Seek to marry your own, join on to your own kind because the white race is doomed and there's no future with white folks. And under these grounds, it's suicide to want a white woman. This is Julius Lester, and I've been talking to heavyweight champion and Muslim minister Muhammad Ali. Thank you very much. That was former Pacifica producer Julius Lester's September 1968 interview with Muhammad Ali. Mr. Lester is a retired professor from the University of Massachusetts at Amherst and the author of 44 books since 1968. We end now with a poem that Muhammad Ali gave on his return visit to UCLA in May of 1971. And this poem tells about this little black boy who had a purpose in life and he wanted to die fighting for his people's freedom. He just had a lot of bad experience with the whites in the South. Saw a few black people lynched, saw black women kicked in the pregnant stomachs, trying to get better bussing and things down there. He hitchhiked up to a place called Brooklyn, New York, and joined a group called the Black Panthers. And he liked what they preached. And one day he's got his wish, dying, fighting for freedom. The Black Panthers got in a shootout. It was 50 of them and 3,000 policemen and National Guardsmen. The odds were against them that night. 25 Black Panthers died in a shootout. 24 surrendered. And one of them stayed on the rooftop. He wouldn't surrender. He was tired. He didn't care no more about living. He wanted to be free. And the policeman came out and said, all right, 25 of your brothers are dead. 24 have surrendered. Come down or we coming up. And he looked off the rooftop and he shouted in poetic fashion. He said, better far from all I see to die fighting to be free. What more fitting end could be? Better surely than a bed where in broken health I'm led, lingering until I'm dead. Better than with prayers and pleas in the clutch of some disease, wasting slowly by degrees. Better than of heart attack or some dose of drug I lack. Let me die by being black. Better far that I should go standing here against the foe. Is there sweeter death to know? Better than the bloody stain on some highway where I'm laying, torn by flying glass and pain. Better call in death to come than to die another dumb, muted victim of the slum. Better than of prison rot, if there's any choice I've got, kill me here on the spot. Better far my fight to wage, now while my blood balls with rage, lest it cool with ancient age. Better violent to die than to come down an Uncle Tom and try, making peace just to live a lie. Better if I say my sooth, I shall die demanding truth while I'm still akin to youth. Better now than later on, now that fear of death is gone, never mind another darn. <laughs> <laughs>